Welcome. Today is the day we're going to be installing uh, our Brembo big brake kit on our X5 because our um, discs have arrived. Uh, take a look at this. Look at the rollers. Look at the size of them. These are massive and heavy as well. These are huge. I mean, almost 16 inches. Some cars would come with wheels that are this size. Well, let's uh, start taking this apart and uh, take it from there. All right, so we got the wheel off. And like I mentioned, uh, you just have to get these off. I believe these are torques over there. I, I don't know what size it is. You have to figure that out. These right here. When those come off, the whole caliper with the bracket should come off. And then we do undo the, uh, the, the brake line and then the rotor and we'll be on to the uh, new set. disc off and our um, old caliper all you have to do is loosen these two back bolts these right here and uh, the whole caliper with the bracket will slide off you don't need to undo the uh, the caliper itself first because there's no point since none of this stuff is going to be used and uh, I just rested it on something so the brake like, it doesn't get stretched um, and uh, now we're basically ready to assemble our new uh, new discs and uh, and the caliper. Now take a look at the uh, the size difference. This is the original. This is, I believe, this is 320 millimeters. This is 395. Look how massive that is. That is crazy. I mean, look at the size is size difference is tremendous I can't wait to uh, test this out and see how this performs all right so uh, let's continue our journey yeah. One thing I want to mention is these ears uh, over here for the for the shield. I have to be bent a little bit because when you put the new caliper on, it uh, actually interferes here. So you could either cut it off or bend it this way. I think I'm just gonna bend it because it's not gonna interfere with anything else, and uh, it should be fine. So the disc is installed. And this is huge. It looks like a big plate. advice uh, when you are ready to um, to swap the, the brake line what you want to do is uh, I was gonna just loosen this end and uh, and from the old caliper and put it in but it's almost impossible reason being is because uh, this line is pretty sturdy so it, it won't it'll, it twists and it won't you won't be able to uh, to get it off unless you loosen this end as well 
So, um, you, what you want to do is make sure you have a full uh, reservoir of brake fluid and uh, try to unbolt this first as quick as possible. Loosen this before, this part before as well, so it's already loosened. Unbolt that, and once this is uh, loose, you'll be able to just, you know, untangle the, the hose and do a quick swap onto the new um, new caliper. I mean, the, here is the new caliper already installed. I mean, it looks beautiful. Uh, it's getting dark on me, so I gotta have to hurry. So, uh, just gotta put the brake pads in and uh, do the um, brake bleed. Uh, make sure there's no air in the system and we'll be all set. I uh, installed the uh, line to bleed the brakes. Got our our uh, pressure bleeder, our trusty homemade pressure bleeder right here. This thing has been awesome. Makes the brake breathing process a breeze. You don't have to bother nobody. This is great. All right, so let's let's get to it. mountain but we have run into a little issue apparently on this wheel this is a 499 style wheel I guess there's a clearance issue uh, it touches here the, the barrel is touching a little bit I'm not sure if there's enough room here uh, barely but it's definitely touching here so we need to figure out a solution for this uh, looks like we have to put at least like a three millimeter spacer maybe or a five maybe that should solve the problem so I came up with this idea I have these two shims which are five millimeters each I'm just gonna do a test if a five millimeter spacer will work so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna place the shims right here uh, on opposite sides and then I'm gonna Try to mount the wheel and see if that will give us enough clearance over here because apparently it's touching here and here so but i think uh five should do the trick i'm thinking a three might work but that might be close but a five should definitely do the trick so uh let me uh just tape them to the uh to the hub and mount the wheel and then i'll show you guys how it looks I actually placed three shims so it would be more uniform so uh, let's see if uh, if that will do the trick and I should order a five millimeter spacer so this worked man I'm ecstatic this worked five millimeters is just enough I don't know if we could see in there let me grab the light it makes just enough room obviously I didn't torque them down to the full spec because the, uh, the shims are plastic so I kind of torque them just hand filled make sure that everything is even and the wheel spins freely everything uh, looks good so this will work so I just have to place an order hopefully uh, the spacer will come within a day or so 
and we will be able to complete and finally do a test drive. Man, this this got me scared for a second, but uh, I guess a little bit of uh, ingenuity and uh, a little bit of effort and anything is possible. So stay tuned. All right, so here's an update on the uh, brake conversion uh, setup. So um, we got our five millimeter spacers has been installed and test it and it indeed it does work uh the five millimeter spacers provide enough room on the 499 st style wheels uh, just enough to clear the the inner bell right here and here uh, which is enable enables it to not to rub against the uh, the barrel so take a look the, the setup looks really nice in my opinion it complements nicely the uh, white color of the car with the blue uh, brake calipers and like I mentioned plenty of times before these are just massive uh, look how how the uh, rotors fill the uh, the wheel there's there's not much room left below or above the uh, the wheel uh, and keep in mind these are 19 inch rims so I'm very pleased with the looks and the uh, braking performance as well so let's talk about the uh, what else is needed aside from the hardware so we you will most likely need to code your uh, your module for the brake booster to pump more brake fluid up to the front brakes uh, reason to compensate for the bigger calipers since there's four pistons on each wheel right now up front so there's there need there, the pump needs to pump more uh, brake fluid up front so the pedal is nice and firm you could do it you could still drive without coating it but the mm, pedal travel is much longer and um, it basically defeats the purpose if you coat it the pedal is nice and firm uh, the bite is very quick it's uh, the, 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 the torque on the brakes is is immense uh, I like how the car brakes right now it uh, it definitely is an improvement over the OEM setup. I'm not gonna talk about the decoding procedure. Gonna, like I said, I'm gonna put a link down in the description for the X5 form where there's plenty of members describing this, how this procedure can be done uh, right from your uh, from your home, from your driveway or your garage for that matter. Um, yeah, so um, let me discuss how much this whole setup cost so let's talk about the uh, the rotors first you have three options for the rotors the, the, there's an OEM option there's a Zimmerman option and there's a brake kinetic company name is uh, option which is available I think it's on eBay I went with the Zimmerman which are plain blank rotors uh, I think uh, there's no need to go crazy uh, the OEM ones are cross drilled the brake kinetic ones you could get them both cross drilled and slotted but um, in my opinion for my needs it's not needed um, the Zimmerman cost me about 375 bucks from FCP Euro which is not bad considering the fact that it comes with a lifetime replacement warranty which means next time I need rotors I get them replaced at no cost and basically they pay for themselves in the long range so uh, so I think that that was the, the best option for me uh, and it still does look nicely with the blank rotors as well I mean obviously the uh, the cross drill or slotted give you that, that more aggressive look but I like this nice settled look now uh, the calipers uh, cost me, I got them off of eBay as well. You could find them uh, sometimes in the junkyard on orders members selling them on eBay, eBay as well. I got them for 500 bucks with the pads. Uh, keep in mind the pads were almost brand new so I didn't have to buy pads. And the pads alone are about 200 bucks. So that, that was nice saving over there. And also, I also got the rear calipers with this, the front ones as well. 
Uh, the rear one cost me about 150, but I did not install the rear ones yet because there's uh, there's still uh, life on my rear brakes, so I just did the front for now. But when it come when the time comes, I'm definitely gonna upgrade the rear as well. And uh, aside from the calipers, the uh, the paint was about 50 bucks. The G2 paint, the the sprayer, and uh, some sandpaper was an additional. I believe 10 bucks and the uh, the last thing that I needed to get was the 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 um, the spacers spacers were about 55 so the grand total for this front setup was about thousand uh, dollars which is not bad considering the fact if you went to buy this from the dealership it would be around three thousand dollars alone for the parts so uh, that was uh, that's a nice uh, that's quarter of the cost of the uh, brand new setup, and uh, to be honest, it does not perform any different. If uh, this one from the one that you would have gotten from the dealer, so it's a nice savings, and the uh, looks and the performance is definitely there. So I definitely like the way this uh, setup came out and I would recommend it to anybody considering upgrading the brakes uh, on their X5 it uh, definitely improves the, uh, the braking capability of this vehicle and uh, gives you nice looks as well um, take a look 